Hi, Kernetex here with an extra video for Linux, building Linux from scratch 11.0. Um, it's all to do with something I've uh, seen before and I keep forgetting to mention um, after Linux from scratch has been built. Um, indeed, if it, it's not specifically to do with Linux from scratch, but it's if you build a kernel using the default options, um, it seems to select uh, it seems to be quite conservative and select um, a frequency um, profile for the CPU that means that the CPU is running at quite a slow speed. Um, I've noticed I'm currently in the middle of recording the BLFS 11.0 videos and I've, I've suddenly noticed that the compiles are taking a lot longer than I thought they should be doing and realized that it's because of this CPU frequency setting that's not um, uh, actually utilizing the CPU at, it, at its fastest frequency. Um, so if you're wondering why you can see the um, these boot scripts that have started and you think well they're not part of Linux from scratch 11.0 that's that's why it's like I say it's because I'm halfway through recording beyond Linux from scratch I thought I'd um, get this video out onto the Linux from scratch 11.0 videos that I've done to um, help alleviate any issues that you may have think with yourself thinking like well Linux from scratch seems to be a lot slower uh, as I say it's not actually Linux from scratch it's it's um, it appears to be kernel the the kernel in fact, if anything, Linux from scratch should be faster than any bog standard distributions because it would have been compiled specifically for your uh, CPU um, if you use the default compile options um, or if you um, use the native at least, it would have um, compiled code specifically for your CPU. So in theory, it should be a little bit faster. So um, what I'll do is I'll show you the issue first of all. So if I log in as root, um, now uh, just using the machine at the terminal, you don't notice the difference because the slow speed is fast enough for doing um, every everyday stuff. Uh, but I can show you if I can remember how to run. OpenSSL has got a test mode. Um, where it will run uh, okay it's just help where you can get it to run some uh, procedures um, and get some timing results and I can demonstrate the how, how much slower it is uh, without the uh, tweaking that's needed um, right, I can't Remember the open man, open SSL. Uh, maybe I should have prepared this before I start the video, but not to worry. Um, speed, yeah, that's it. It's open, open SSL speed. Right now, by default, this um, goes through every single method that OpenSSL knows about. Let's do a reset, get that top, rid of that top line. It's the uh, icons from the boot up that does that. Um, so if I do open SSL help again. Um, as I remember you do speed and then one of the digest commands, for example, let's do um, SHA-512 Oops. and I think one of these cipher commands, let's try DES CBC CBC So this will just run a few loops for SHA-512 to do the same for DESCBC. Yeah, it does. Okay, so maybe just SHA-512 would be enough. But if you can see at the moment, um, 
for 16 and 64 size blocks it's doing um, about 2.2 .2 million computations and oh there's a summary there actually um, right these are thousands of bytes per second process let's go by this summary and we'll just concentrate on the SHA-512 so the biggest block it's doing uh, 147 million bytes by the looks of it and for the 16 bytes it's doing 11 million um, bytes now if I show you if I go to another terminal actually and log in so we keep those numbers on the screen uh, what I'll do is I'll show you the issue now um, if you display uh, some information in the sysfs directory so it's forward slash sys under system you'll see there's a CPU directory there and we can access some of the features of the CPU um, and what let's do is for each core so I'll just look at core 0 for example for the, for the moment under core 0 there's a CPU freq directory and underneath that there is something called the scaling governor now if I display that you can see that it's set to user space so that means that the kernel is expecting a program to set the scaling level um, that the kernel should tell the CPU to use because nothing's been set after boot up it just defaults to the minimum speed so if we look at another one of these um, properties here the minimum frequency you can see the minimum frequency is 800 megahertz whereas the maximum frequency that the processor can run at is 2.7 megahertz now you have to bear in mind these figures I believe are the figures including turbo speed so I think the CPU in this um, Apple iMac is clocked at 1.4 gigahertz but you can see the number there that number is 2.7 gigahertz and that is the maximum turbo speed so that's the highest speed that the CPU can attain when it's in turbo um, so now we know the minimum max let's find out actually what the CPU is running at and if we recall this cat and put this scaling current frequency value in you can see it's running a little bit over the minimum it'll be a little bit over because obviously it's processing the command we've just done or it might be processing something in the background so each time I call this command up it's going to alter a bit in fact it's gone a little bit below 800 there for some reason that might just be some rounding error so it basically the CPU is operating at its minimum level that the kernel is going to run it at um, now to accelerate it we need to find out what governors are built, built into the kernel so we use this option here to find out what's available to us to set and you can see there's four there there's on demand, user space, performance and shed util I can't remember exactly how shed util works it's similar to on demand but there's a subtle difference so I won't mention that one uh, but you can read about it in the kernel um, there's user space which we're already seeing because that's the current mode then there's on demand performance which just need an explanation on demand is probably the best one to have from a uh, energy consumption point of view because what it will do when the CPU is idling it will switch the frequency to the minimum available and when the si there's demand for the CPU um, it will switch to a higher frequency so hence the name on demand performance however will put the CPU into the maximum uh, CPU frequency so the CPU will always be running at the maximum clock rate so obviously from an energy point of view it's going to use more energy so ideally unless you definitely want maximum performance without the CPU potentially decelerating or not accelerating at the right moments um, on demand is probably an all-round good um, setting to, to set so to set that from the command prompt we can do echo the name of the profile we want to use and just send that to the um, 
scaling frequency, which is that one there. Sorry, not that one. Uh, where is it? Current. Oh, no, scaling governor. Big pardon. So we're telling it, we're telling the kernel that to set the scaling governor to on demand. And that's done. Now, so if I look at that option, you can see it's set to on demand, but that's only on that core. So if I look at core one, you can see it's still in set to user space. Same as core two and also, of course, core three. So I need to set it for each individual core. Um, probably the best way to do that is if I recall this command here. Um, is to do a little for loop, so for um, frec, for example, in one, two, three, four, sorry, zero, one, two, three, so each of the cores that I want to set, do do this command, we want to set this to the frequency and done. Uh, sorry, don't need to have a dollar there. So that set that all those cores now to the um, scale, set the scaling governor for all those cores to on demand. So if I now do an echo, uh, sorry, a cat of all all the cores, you can see they're now all on demand. And if I also do the current frequency you can see they're all above 800 and they're all varying because they're all doing different things you know they're all picking up different little jobs so if I now rerun the um, if I switch back and rerun this command here it won't run any quicker because it does all the tests three seconds at a time but you'll see that it will achieve um, a higher throughput within each three second block that it tests so I'll just wait for um, probably about 30 seconds for this to complete. Okay, so there's the results. Now if I switch back to the first terminal and we look at the 16 bytes, for example, uh, again, just concentrate on SHA-512. You can look at the other numbers if you want, but this is the one I'll be looking at. That's currently set to 11 million. Okay, the one above is 16 million. If I switch back to the results after we've set the performance level, uh, sorry, the on-demand uh, frequency level of the CPU, you can see that this is um, about three times as fast and likewise with the CBC. The larger block size doesn't appear to have improved. Oh, yes, it does. Yes, it has. That's also roughly three times the size um, in both situations. So there's the slowest mode and there's the fastest mode. So it's, it's over three times as fast in, in every case. So you can see that it has made quite a bit of difference. Now, the only trouble with doing this by, uh, on the command line is that upon reboot, the settings get reset to the default, what, what has been built into the kernel. So ideally, what you want to do is to configure this in the kernel when you decided what profile you want, is to go into the kernel and configure it permanently. So I'll show you, show you where that is. It's in, if I can remember... Um, let's look for CPU freq. Save me hunting around. Oh yes, I know where it'll be. It'll be under power management and ACPI options. And you want to go down to here, CPU frequency scaling. And here you can see are the various profiles that can be added in. So you can see some other ones here. There's that schedule tool which has been put in there by something else, so something else needs that, that one. 
There's a conservative one there which has not been added in. User space, that's been forced in by something. And there's performance there as well, which has also been for forced in. There's also a power save one there. Let's see what it says about that one. So that just sets it to the low, lowest available frequency. If in doubt, say yes. Well, I would just add in the ones you think you really need. There's the user space one. Um, as it says there, uh, either you set it manually or when a user space program sets it. Um, there's the on-demand one, which is one I set. And as you can see, it, um, as it says it, um, as a dynamic CPU frequency, does a periodic polling and changes frequency based on the CPU utilization. So it might not be quite as fast as performance, but it will be nearly there. Plus, you'll get the benefits of low power when the CPU is idle. Which, for example, if um, you happen to have a, a program running that's only using one thread, you've got three cores that are doing nothing. So why have them running at full clock when they can be cycled back down to the minimum clock rate while the, the single thread is running on the maximum clock rate. So there's still savings to be had even when the computer is doing something. Um, and then the default one that's set is this bit here. So you can see currently it's set to user space. So all you do is go into that and this will present the options that are currently set to yes. So if I keep that one, if I added in the power save, for example, um, oh no, it is there, that's right. It, sh it shows the available ones. Um, so although power saves not set at the moment, if I actually select it here, it actually forces it as built in and you can see user space has become available to be deselected now. So in theory, what you can do is just des deselect all the ones you want, go here and, oh no, it hasn't added a new on demand actually. That's interesting. So it kind of works in different ways. And if I add in on demand here, then that be becomes available here and it hasn't. Okay, that's that's a bit weird. Um, I'm not sure why on demand hasn't been added actually. Right, maybe there's some more configuration to do with the on demand. It says to um, look at this documentation and also it says if in doubt do a no so maybe the best one is to set it at the performance one and you can see that makes all the others available to to set oh there is another option oh that's for AMD but anyway you can see that's how you can by using this option here to set the the default one without having to set it at runtime. So that's it. That's um, something that is quite important, really, especially if you're going on to do BLFS. If you've got a well, any sort of computer in the recently in the last ten years or so that's capable of scaling CPU frequency, then this is obviously going to be quite important. Otherwise, you're not going to get the most out of your your CPU. So thanks for watching, and uh, I hope this is beneficial for you. And uh, if you have found it beneficial, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and uh, subscribe as well if you want to hear about more of my other videos. Thank you. Goodbye.